There's a fungus among us, a poet once said, and there's a wonderful thing that there is. Because if it weren't for this critter, we'd be covered in litter and have to give up cheese and bread. That's an old poem I use every time we talk, talked about fungi in the classroom. And uh, so, this is Donna Patrick, Sunset Hill Tree Farm, and it, we're talking real farm, real fungi today. As I walk around the, um, there's a fungus among us, a poet once said, and there's a wonderful thing that there is. Because if it weren't for this critter, we'd be covered in litter and have to give up cheese and bread. That's an old poem I use every time we talk, talked about fungi in the classroom. And uh, so, this is Donna Patrick, Sunset Hill Tree Farm, and it, we're talking real farm, real fungi today. As I walk around the um, farm on a daily basis doing chores, I just I keep finding all these really cool mushrooms and fungi and so I just like I've got to document all of this because I get so excited when I see them so let's talk about the kingdom fungi so you know okay how many kingdoms there are of organisms on this planet is constantly changing I, you know we went from three actually there was two in the beginning you know uh, back with Linnaeus and everything plants and animals that was it and then and everything had to fit in there and as we learn more and more we realize that that's not how it works so Fungi has their own kingdom, they're one of the major kingdoms, and they have specific characteristics. They are eukaryotic, that means they have a true nucleus, just like we do. They are all decomposers uh, in some way. Um, they are not photosynthetic, uh, photosynthetic, so you will, if they have a green tint to them, it's probably not because of chlorophyll, uh, but they don't carry out any type of photosynthesis. They are mostly multicellular, but the single-celled ones are the yeast, of course, and um, we use those for brewing and making wine and cheese and bread and things like that, so those are important. Uh, they are non-modal, and their cell walls are made out of chitin instead of cellulose like um, plant cells are. So um, the ones that we're going to see most are going to be mushrooms, um, and those are in the Basidiomycota or Basidiomycetes um, phylum. And so what we're gonna see most is that, and when you see a mushroom, like you see it emerge from the ground, and we, I've, got, I've got some that are, you're gonna see, you know, some variation, different days, uh, but they're gonna have a cap, and underneath that cap is gonna be the um, reproduction, which is the spores. So we have reproductive units under here that are spores, and um, they're found in gills of, of mushrooms. So you'll have the gills under there, uh, it looks like gills of a fish, except these are mushroom gills, and they're just separations, segmentations of the cap, and in a, inside of them are all the spores. Um, the ring that you see around the stipe here is where the mushroom was attached when it first emerged, and then it flowers out, so that leaves like a scar. Um, so that's what it is. It's the skirt or the ring. And then uh, w the action happens underneath the ground. That's where the mycelium is. And, and they can potentially be reproductive units as well, but their job is to decompose where they live, decompose everything, break it down, and turn it into the nutrients that are needed. Because the whole point here is that we get nutrients, we grow, and we reproduce. I mean, that's, that's the whole point um, of all of this. And so mycelium spreads out. It's a mat of fibers that, um, that are underneath the ground. Each one individual is called a hypha, and then they go out into the ground around them, and they um, decompose, break down the things that um, that they're living in, whatever it might be. And we'll, I'll show you several different media um, that where you can find them, and uh, they're going to break it down, and then they're going to feed the body, and the body then is producing um, the sexual units, which are the spores in this case. So, let's go find some fungi. Okay, right here, you can see um, on this stick. The um, farm on a daily basis doing chores, I just I keep finding all these really cool mushrooms and fungi. And so I just like, I've got to document all of this because I get so excited when I see them. So let's talk about the kingdom fungi. So you know, okay, how many kingdoms there are of organisms on this planet is constantly changing I, you know we went from three actually there was two in the beginning you know uh, back with Linnaeus and everything plants and animals that was it and then and everything had to fit in there and as we learn more and more we realize that that's not how it works so fungi has their own kingdom they're one of the major kingdoms and they have specific characteristics 
They are eukaryotic. That means they have a true nucleus, just like we do. They are all decomposers uh, in some way. Um, they are not photosynthetic. Uh, photosynthetic so you will if they have a green tint to them it's probably not because of chlorophyll uh, but they don't carry out any type of photosynthesis they are mostly multicellular but the single cell ones are the yeast of course and um, we use those for brewing and making wine and cheese and bread and things like that so those are important uh, they are non-modal and their cell walls are made out of chitin instead of cellulose like um, plant cells are so um, the ones that we're going to see most are going to be mushrooms. Um, and those are in the Basidiomycota or Basidiomycetes um, phylum. And so what we're going to see most is that. And when you see a mushroom, like you see it emerge from the ground, and we, I've, got, I've got some that are, you're going to see, you know, some variation different days. Uh, but they're going to have a cap, and underneath that cap is going to be the um, reproduction is the spores so we have reproductive units under here that are spores and um, they're found in gills of, of mushrooms so you'll have the gills under there uh, it looks like gills of a fish except these are mushroom gills and they're just separations segmentations of the cap and in a, inside of them are all the spores um, the ring that you see around the stipe here is where the mushroom was attached when it first emerged and then it flowers out so that leaves like a scar um, so that's what it is. It's the skirt or the ring. And then uh, w the action happens underneath the ground. That's where the mycelium is. And, and they can potentially be reproductive units as well. But their job is to decompose where they live, decompose everything, break it down, and turn it into the nutrients that are needed. Because the whole point here is that we get nutrients, we grow, and we reproduce. I mean, that's, that's the whole point um, of all of this. And so mycelium spreads out. It's a mat of fibers that um that are underneath the ground each one individual is called a hypha and then they go out into the ground around them and they um decompose break down the things that um that they're living in whatever it might be and we'll i'll show you several different media um that where you can find them and uh they're going to break it down and then they're going to feed the body and the body then is producing um the sexual units which are the spores in this case so let's Go find some fungi. Um, on this stick, I don't know how well you can see it, um, but because I'm shadowing it with my with my the camera, but you can see these are called jelly fungi or jelly mushrooms, and they're very gelatinous. They're gelatinous. They're they're sticky looking. They're shiny. And uh, this one, I wet this one so you could kind of see, and then. Um, and the cat's shading it now. But they're all over the ground out here um, right after it rains, you can see them. So probably when it's not wet, they probably just look like uh, dead leaves on the ground. And then when it rains, they get wet and they come back to life into this little gelatinous form. And those are really cool, really weird looking. This is one I collected. I thought it was really cool. Um, I don't know if this is like the turkey tails. I can't actually figure out what these are, but they're like big, they're like patties. And I actually pulled this one up and there's a bigger one I'm gonna show you out in, um, out in the play area. But this one I thought was cool because the grass is growing through it. So we have grasses that are growing all the way through this mushroom. And it looks like a turkey tail, but turkey tails are on the trees. I'm gonna, I'll show you those. Um, but underneath, you can see where the mycelium was, uh, where it was in the ground. And you can see the roots of these grasses and things that have grown right through it. So, very interesting interaction between plant and fungi. Okay, so as you can see, we live in a very wooded area. And of course, if you have a lot of woods and a lot of shade, a lot of dead limbs and leaves and such, you have, you're gonna have a lot of fungi. You're gonna have a lot of decomposition going on. And we've had, um, not in the last week, but we had a lot of rain. Uh, one weekend we had like three and a half inches of rain. And so um, it, the soil's wet. And so it's perfect for growing fungi. And so here's one of those, like I had a while ago, it um, 
I had one that had the grasses growing through it. Here's a really large one. So here's my foot and there's the, the big mushroom. I mean, it is big. So you can see it has kind of that turkey tail look, but it grows flat on the ground. And these grow everywhere out here. They're all over the place. And, and you can see that they're very large. Um, so that's one example. I've had several, I've, I've again, looked at non-iNaturalists, can't find an exact name, but that's that one. I just happened to spy this one while I was standing there. Look over here, coming up, a little emergent mushroom right there. Probably Agarita, not sure, but they're out here. So this log has turkey tail fungi or turkey tail mushrooms on it. it has a lot of them. It, right now they're all pretty small, but I've seen it at different times of the years of the year when it, it gets really big. They get really large. And there's some different colored ones that show up as well. But these are classic turkey tail mushrooms growing out, a shelf type mushroom growing out of this decaying log. And of course the purpose for mushrooms, and or fungi as we said, the purpose is to uh, decompose. That's their job. Um, the active parts are on the inside of this log, the mycelia, breaking it down. And uh, then these are just the reproductive parts on the outside. So there's some cool little ones right there. This is cool. Okay, so again, just walking around here, going from spot to spot, and I found some more mushrooms. Um, these are really interesting. Very cool looking. You can see the cap is curled up. There's several of these like that where the cap is curled up and the gills are exposed. Um, so I'm not sure if right now these gills are empty or full. Are they un immature and so they're not dark? You don't see the spores or have they already released their spores? So I'm not sure, but those are interesting and I don't know what kind of mushrooms these are. Look at this one. It is a really beautiful purple. And the gills, again, exposed very well right here. You can see down the stipe where it's fairly recently come up. I've been trying to find out what these purples are. I don't think they're wine caps, um, but I'm not sure what they are yet. There's some more that we'll be seeing. And this is just right next door to the purple one. Look right there, just a few steps over. A really pretty little common white mushroom. Very pretty. So I'm back here in the farm zoo, of course, so it's gonna be loud. The roosters <laughs> and the chickens. And so I've marked two interesting, ah, oh, dang, one of them doesn't look good. I'll find some more. Uh, I marked these a couple days ago, some interesting fungi. This one's pretty much played out, so we're gonna have to go find some more that look pretty. But um, this one, again, I looked it up. I've got a potential name for it I'll put across the screen. Um, it's just a little bitty orange fungus growing on the ground. And um, you can see it's, it's cute. It's, I mean, it's a nice color. Um, just little bitty cups on the ground. And a uh, little orange fungus growing out here on the soil. This is a tapioca fungus. This one is starting to kind of turn tan or brown at this point. Um, they're everywhere too. I'll try to find some really white ones so you can see how white they are. They're just milky, I mean just white, white, white. Um, but this may be releasing spores or something um, and so it's turning kind of tannish or brownish. That's called a tapioca fungus. There's some more of it right there. Over here, when I was out here feeding this morning, there's some tapioca fungus that's nice and pretty and white. There you go. You can see how white that is. So it's called tapioca. There's some more of it over there. There's the bunnies. Say hey, bunnies. Hey, bunnies. Look at those bunnies. Hey, babies. Looky there. 
It's her Boston Terrier bunny. It's marked just like a Boston Terrier. It is hilarious. Um, okay, so over here while I was feeding this morning, I saw this other mushroom and I haven't had time to research it and find out its name yet, but there's one just emerging, barely coming out of the ground. So you can see that, there's that little cap coming out of the ground. And then here's one that's already up. Right there. Very interesting, it's brown um, with a little yellow on it. Um, looks like something may have been chewing on it over here. So, you know, oh, here's another one right by it. Look at that. There you go. Another little cute fungi. So when I find the name of them, I'll post them. And if I don't know what they are, I'll post that too. And right here beside it, my goodness, what a great fungi morning this is. These little red caps coming up. And I think these are a bolete. I've looked up several like that. But those are just coming out, pushing through the leaf litter as well. So back here in this really shaded area, uh, lots of leaf litter. We have lots of really cool fungi and really loud chickens. You can't see them. Really loud chickens. Hey! That's Lando Calrissian right there. He's the rooster in this pen. Hey Lando, what up? Okay, so, hey. So I started walking back here to get the eggs for the evening. And look at what I found. It's pushed the leaves back. And there's actually two mushrooms down in there. And they're pushing those leaves back. Because these leaves right here used to be on top of the ground. And these, as these mushrooms are coming up and pushing in, they're moving those leaves out of the way. So those are brand new. They just popped up today. That is so cool. Found that right on the trail. <laughs> Watching the cats for a little while. They're crazy. <laughs> They're fun. That's Mojo and Broomhilda. And over there is Wuzzy. Okay, so I'm back here in uh, around the play area. And here are some very typical, probably agarita mushrooms, brown top. Um, you can see them opening up. You can see the stipe. You can see it right here. We've got two or three of these out here in this area. Um, very common mushrooms but over here I saw where'd it go there's one not very not very pretty one kind of malformed I'm not sure what happened there um, but over here I saw some very pretty purple mushrooms look right here there's another purple like we saw a while ago Purple mushrooms. There's a little one coming up right there. So you can see the gills underneath. See that? There you go. How nice. I really do want to find out what these are. I don't, we planted wine caps on purpose over in a specific area. Put the mycelium in the ground. Um, and they came up one season and uh, I'll, I'll be completely 100% honest, I was afraid to eat them. Because even though we put them there and we knew what they were, I was still kind of afraid. <laughs> so we didn't eat them. So, but, because I, I mean seriously, mushrooms scare me. There's so many that are dangerous and they scare me. 
so I don't eat them unless I buy them from the store and then I know that I know that these are really cool looking. Okay, so we had a rain last night and I get up this morning and these crazy fungi are growing on this stump. What is it? I gotta try to find out. It looks like some jelly, probably jelly fungi of some kind. They're down here on the ground too. They're fairly disgusting, but also very, very cool. Okay, so let me go ahead and talk about this since I'm here. Um, this is not a fungus. Uh, you can see this green layer growing on the ground. Not a fungus. This is actually a moss, which is a type of plant. And it's green, so that means it photosynthesizes. Now, these are not um, plants with roots and stems like a tree, so they never get large. They always stay very, very tiny because of their the way that they acquire water and nutrients is very modified and so they stay tiny. But if you looked at these under a microscope, they'd look like teeny tiny little Christmas trees. And they're so cute, but this is a moss growing on the ground, not a fungus. Okay, so this is a very interesting mushroom growing underneath the side of our raised bed here where our beans are growing. Um, it's not as pretty today as it was a couple days ago. Something's been eaten at it. It looked really, really cool. I have no idea what it is. It's another red topped, so some kind of bolete, perhaps. Um, I'm not sure. Uh, I've got I've got a bunch of stuff turned into unnaturalists, like I said, and I'm gonna I'm wor I'm working on getting names and descriptions and everything information about each of these. But that was a cool one that was by our um, bed raised bed. Now the thing about these raised beds is they're filled with chicken dirt. They have a lot of compost in them and stuff. And so, just like that one growing through that dirt, over here, you can see amongst the chard. So we have all this chard growing, but underneath the chard, there's a mushroom. So right there, this mushroom growing in our raised bed. And like I said, there's a lot of chicken dirt compost happening in here and of course they stay wet because we water them and so it's not crazy that a mushroom would choose to grow in this spot it's a very good place for it actually there's some jalapenos there's some basil So back here to pick up eggs tonight and I found these lovelies. I have no idea what they are either, but I will find out. They are bright yellow and there's a bunch of littles coming in. Do you see those? All the littles coming in around them? That is incredible. They were not here this morning when I came to feed. So these pretty yellow mushrooms just popped up this afternoon. Okay, so this is a giant puffball. I don't know if you can see, let me back it up so you can see. This is a stump out here um, in the cedar fields and it has these giant puffballs on it. This is probably the biggest one, but there are several. So here's my hand and here's the puffball. It is almost as long as my hand, if you can see like that. There you go. It's very large. Here's the smaller ones. And then there's ah, some more small ones on this side. And so these are giant puffballs and they're growing out of the stump. Now, commercial uh, mushroom farmers will use stumps and logs to grow shiitakes, matakis, and some other kinds of edible mushrooms. And so, you know, mushrooms growing out of a stump, not a bad thing. And these are all puffballs. Over here, 
This one's about gone. I just see that saw this. This one's pretty much spent, but it was growing out of a cow patty, which you would want. I mean, that's they're gonna decompose that the cow patty, and that's a good thing. But right here, this stump. Here's my foot. So you can get an idea of the size of what we're looking at. And those are all giant puff balls growing in the stump. That's really cool. Really, really cool. This one right here is another kind of puff ball. It's called like a peel away puff ball. And so this outer to me, it looks like a little sea anemone or something, but um, this outer covering will crack and will peel away and the puff ball will be underneath it. Um, there's, there's another smaller one right there. And here's one right, oh, this one actually is not, that one didn't peel away, it just opened up. When it opens up like that, of course the spores can be released. Let me see if I can mess with it. Let me get some better. Whoop, there it goes. You see that? Whoop, there it goes. See it? Those are the spores being released from the pup ball. So that one's open and the spores are coming out by the bazillions, can I say? And they'll lay around, they'll find a good place to be until it's wet, and then they'll grow more mushrooms. That's so cool. I don't know if my sister remembers, but when we were kids, I played with puff balls, and I would tell her that that was, it was uh, magic. They were magic. Those are really cool. We have a lot of puff balls out here. So here's this other one. This one looks like it's starting to open up too. And then there's the big one that we looked at. And it may be about to open up too. Now some of these, this outside is cracked and fallen off, but on these it seems to be maintained. So I'm not sure what the difference is. But those are puff balls. That's cool. Kind of a upside down mushroom. this morning and even though I've already started working on the fungi um, thing I found these really cool new mushrooms that just showed up so I'm gonna show them to you look how cool those look those are little teeny tiny mushrooms growing around in a cluster on this log Those are exciting. I love it when I find new stuff. Okay, so I'm out here watering the trees and I noticed several mushrooms over and by some of the other trees and I, uh, the turkeys came through and pretty much wiped those out. But the turkeys have moved on now and so I found this little one peeking underneath this Christmas tree. So it's coming up right at the base of the Christmas tree. Now right around the Christmas trees, of course, they're watered. And that's what I'm doing right now is watering Christmas trees. And they have a level of detritus uh, mulching there. And so it's a good place to grow mushrooms. So we do have mushrooms growing around our little Christmas trees. Okay, so we've looked at all these different fungi and um, that are all over the farm. Another thing that I get really excited about that's not just a fungus, but it is an actual an interbreeding of two species that it's a symbiotic relationship where they work together, live together, and uh, create something. It's called lichen. Uh, we always said Alice algae and Freddy fungus took a lichen to each other. So it's a, an algae, which is a plant, which is photosynthetic, 
and a, a fungus, which is not a plant and not photosynthetic, and they come together and they help each other out. So what one can supply, the other needs, and they help each other so much. And so there's lichen all over the farm, and I, I get so excited when I find really cool lichen, so I collect it. So I'm walking around with sticks all the time. There's three major kinds of lichen. Um, there's the crustose, which is like these here, and they're just like, just exactly that. They're like crusty. They're little crusty growths, and you'll see them on trees and rocks and things like that. And so there's the, that's the crustose. There's the fruticose, which produces a fruit. So here's a really cool looking one right there. Uh, these, this one has two cool ones right here. This one with the orange fruit on it. And so it's like, it's really, that's really exciting. That's a cool one. So that's a fruticose one's called like a foliose and it makes um, this little foliage um, and they can also be called like cup line, li uh, lichen because they have the little cups there but it makes the foliage on it they look almost like a lettuce or something so here's a really good one so foliose fruticose and crustose or crustose are the three major kinds of lichen but they're so interesting because you have the algae that is able to collect uh, the sun's energy and turn it into food. But you also have the fungus, which is um, going to be digging into or growing into the whatever the compound is they're living on. Usually it's a tree or a rock, and they are going to be absorbing nutrients from that source. Now, they are one of the major, they're one of the um, beginning species in... Um, in the breaking down of rocks. And so rocks, think about these things growing on rocks. They're creating um, space in the rock because they're go anywhere they can get in, they're gonna be growing mycelium in there. They're gonna be breaking down that rock. So they're chemical, it's called chemical weathering. And so it's gonna be weathering the rock. And so they're one of the first ones in there when you start seeing um, rocks being broken down, you start seeing the um, the soil being produced, they're one of those first ones. They're gonna come in there in a place where there's no soil and create soil. And that's why you start seeing little plants growing up in cracks and rocks is because probably the lichen was there before them to build soil. So that soil was available for a seed to germinate and grow a plant. And then as the plant grows, it continues to break the uh, rock apart and, and on and on and on and on. So that's how rocks become soil and that's where it starts and that's how it begins and how they break down. So like and play a big part in that. So that's really cool. They, they excite me. All right, this has been fun. And uh, I'd love for you to come out to the farm and go on a, a fungi look. You know, go for a hunting fungi on the farm. That would be fun. But um, until then, until you get to make it out here, this is Donna Patrick, Sunset Hill Tree Farm. Real farm, real fun, uh, and real fungi.